And these are the starters that you just heard. Jalen Pickett, Terrence Shannon, as we told you, leading scores and the headliners for these two programs. Jalen Pickett. Paul Sells, Kelly Pfeiffer, Lewis Garrison, the officials. Dane Danger, Keba Giant center court. It is Danger that taps it back. And it is Illinois in front of a decided crowd. Here at the United Center, they have the first possession, only 135 miles from Champaign, where we are located. Down inside, Danger. Getting to his spot, but leaving it short. They're going to try to establish Dane Danger. Just 18 points over the last four games. They're playing 14 minutes a game. Some of that's foul related, some of that's been performance, some of that's been matchups. But Penn State, not necessarily one of the bigger teams in this league. Look to Illinois to go inside to Danger early. Penn State won five of their last six, largely on the shoulders of that man, Jalen Pickett, who misses his first shot tonight. Inside, there's Danger. That one's easy. A great look from Melendez in transition. Tempo going to be so important tonight. Penn State wants to keep Illinois out of transition. The Illini running early, and Melendez finding Danger on the rim run. This Illinois team has been Jekyll and Hyde at times this year. 20 and 11, 11 and 9 in league play. And Rob, there's been times you and I have seen them, we've thought, man, this is a team that can make a run in the NCAA yeah. tournament, and times where they've looked totally the opposite. Right now, Mike DeCourcy has them as an eight seed, and I still stand by the point that they are the scariest eight seed you're ever going to see due to their talent. It's going to be interesting tonight. What's that mix of twos versus threes look like? This Illinois team last in three-point field goal percentage in Big Ten play. They lead the league in two-point field goal percentage. And they shoot the fourth most threes out of anybody in this conference. But I think the last two games, it's been a much better mix of twos versus threes for the Illini. That foul, by the way, was on Terrence Shannon. Something to keep track of. Illinois' leading scorer picking one up early. Seth Lundy looking up at the shot clock, going to work. 18-footer. Yes. Lundy to, to be consistent. That's a big time shot off that ball screen. Drop coverage on the pick and roll. And you, you look at Lundy's numbers, just a little bit all over the place. Two of eight against Maryland, five of 12 against Northwestern, one of 16 against Rutgers. Warner's got to find its level. He's had a good season. But Rob, you talked about them trying to establish Dane Danger. They've gone to him early. Now Pickett. Jalen Pickett. As Robbie told you in the pregame, he had 41 against these guys on Valentine's Day, ripping their hearts out. Fading away, short. That's good defense by Danger right there. He's going to have to move his feet. Force Pickett to a tough mid-range game. That's what you're going to live with if you're Brad Underwood. First ever Big Ten tournament meeting between these two programs. And here's Shannon. Drive a kick, pockets, corner three, too Whoa. much. But right into the hands of Danger. Offensive board, Meyer cleans it up. You love the toughness right there. Danger there on the initial offensive rebound, and then Matt Meyer flying in as well. It's going to be huge for Penn State. Can they control the glass? They've done a good job all year defensive rebounding, but Illinois fourth in Big Ten play in offensive rebound percentage. And Matthew Meyer, third team all conference. Meanwhile, Lundy has the first four for Penn State. Just a phenomenal screen right there by Jalen Pickett. Those back screens scary. Penn State loves to set them. You're worried about the three-point line. Pickett shooting it at a much higher clip in Big Ten play, 45%. But you got to open up and take away the layup. Good start for Lundy. Almost stolen here. Illinois will be loose with the ball. 13 turnovers a game. Meanwhile, Penn State, one of the best in the country at taking care of the ball. Shannon falling to the ground. No whistle. There's Meyer again, eating up the offensive glass. Even when Matthew Meyer has not shot well this season, he has still defended and he has still rebounded. Meyer coming from the perimeter, bottom left side of your screen, flies in, no one blocking out. Andrew Funk thinks he's got an easy defensive rebound, but Matt Meyer doing his job. That could have easily been an offensive foul on Terrence Shannon. It's the Reggie Miller leg kick. That would have been his second foul. Yeah, that would have been a key call. Maybe got away with one. Talked about the offensive glass. Robbie, three offensive rebounds in three minutes here. 
Guys, I heard the interaction right after that no call. Paul Sells interacting with Micah Shrewsbury. Micah said, that's a foul. He kicked his leg out, and Sells mistakenly said, no, your guy just fell down. Well, and because of that, three-point play, and Illinois has the 7-4 lead. First time ever in this event that Illinois has been the seventh seed. Stop the pop. Cameron Winter coming off his co-Big Ten Player of the Week performance the last couple of games where he hit a couple of buzzer beaters. And a lot of respect for the way that Cam Winter has played. Four or five games in double figures. And a guy that started early, went to the bench, has now started the last eight. Just had a monster five-game stretch, averaging 15 a game and 13 of his last 17 from beyond the arc. Yeah, he's been fantastic, really stepping up his game. There's a rejection by Pickett into the hands of Lundy. Ty Rogers trying to give Pickett the body, and Pickett just did not budge. There's Winter again. Boy, he is playing so aggressive down the stretch of the season. Isn't it amazing, Brandon, when you make shots from the perimeter, now those closeouts are a little bit different. Those driving lanes open up, and Cam Winter in transition shooting it right to the rim. Again, he had to put back against Maryland the other day to secure the victory at the buzzer. 8-7 in our first media timeout. Chicago, such a great host. Snow coming. We have had a chaotic first two days here <laughs> yeah. at the Big Ten tournament with the way the regular season has really played out. That's not a surprise. Yeah, Purdue wow. won the regular season by three games. Everybody else, it was pure chaos. Did you think that was maybe an over and back I on just, Danger? I, I'm not sure, but I thought Danger was going to be a little more maybe decisive about yeah, the front and back court. go into the backcourt and yeah. then get it. It's weird to see Penn State be this long into the game without shooting a three. All six of their shots have been from inside the arc. They have driven this basketball early. That doesn't mean that they're going to start raining threes here at any minute. In their DNA, they lead the country in percentage of points from threes. There's another fantastic cut. Cam Winter at the rim, the back cut there. What a start for Winter. He has six. He's made all three of his shots. And there is a runner for Sincere. Harrison, a tap back goes for Ty Rogers. Well, two storylines certainly developing early. Penn State baskets in the paint, and then Illinois offensive rebound putbacks. They have been great on the glass early. Already four offensive rebounds. There's a long one missed by Michael Hinn. And Penn State making almost 11 threes a game. Fourth best in the country. Here's the Baylor transfer, Matthew Meyer. Left it short, and a tap back. Rodgers can't oh, get that one. Seven games, Ty Rodgers has been active. Almost three offensive rebounds a game, just under six boards a game. He is flying in, going every time. If you're guarding Rodgers, you have got to check him out. Jalen Pickett. Kicking it up top. Winner thought about it. He'll drive it again. Stopping. Faded. Yes. What a start for Cam Winner. Those count too. I and mean, that's Cam Winner playing off two feet. Getting to his oh, jump ooh. stop. Turnaround jumper. Getting some space. What a start he's had here. All from the mid-range and at the rim. We talked about it. Last six. 16 points a game. The 24-point performance over Northwestern. He has taken it to another level. There's a bump. And Meyer stepped on the inline. Turnover. A nice job by Michael Henn. Meyer came off the ball screen. He never left him. The guard never squared him up. He wasn't in any hurry to get back to his man. The help side defense, good to see Pickett right in the middle of the lane. Head shuts down the, the baseline. Meyer ends up stepping on that end line. First turnover for either team. Last year, Illinois was the number one seed, got bounced in the quarterfinals against Indiana and Indianapolis. Of course, two years ago, the Illini won the event. Rogers getting his hand on it. Cross-court skip, Luke Goody, sharpshooter into the game. Shannon been quiet so far. He's only put up one shot. Looking for a screen here. Going to work. Shannon splits him and lost it. Clary up ahead. You can't leave that man open for deep, although Dredd misses. There's Lundy. Rejected by Harris, but Lundy sticks with it. He 
maybe the flex right there. Penn State getting a little revenge on the offensive boards. At Hawkins in the air, Illinois blocks more shots than anybody in this league. Seth Lundy staying with it, finishing the job with the layup. Lundy and Winner have all 14 for the Nittany Lions. Step back, NBA range, Hawkins off the bar. That's just not a good shot for Coleman Hawkins. But a careless turnover, and that is a good shot for Luke Goody. He's playing with a ton of confidence. Goody at Purdue going for a season-high 10 points. Knocked down both of the threes he took. An opportunistic Illinois forcing a turnover and getting a much better, higher quality look from three for Luke Goody. As you watch Luke Goody, keep in mind this is ninth game back from a foot injury. Three-pointer on net. It is the Lundy and Winner show right now at the United Center. Boy, but that play is totally made by Jalen Pickett. Leaves his feet on the baseline and options on the perimeter, but fires it across the grain. Right to Seth Lundy, locked and loaded, top of the key. But there's a bump and a foul on Seth Lundy. His first, and we've got our second media timeout. Been in this building many times, but his first as a head coach. Meyer driving it on Lundy with the finish. He just hesitated, froze Lundy, and then drove it right down that right lane line. Big time move by Matt Meyer. He has had a really nice start here in Chicago. That's won a ton of basketball games in his career, doing it from inside the arc. Yeah, so much success at Baylor in those four seasons. It's one of a couple of Baylor transfers that Brad Underwood has, the other being Dane Danger. And what a job Brad Underwood has done. 55 Big Ten wins over the last four seasons. That's most in the conference. I think you would assume Purdue would have that honor, but it's Illinois. Don't shortchange what, what they accomplished with Kofi Coburn and Iowa DeSumo. Those groups won a ton of games. Well, Purdue's been incredibly successful over that span as well. And Illinois has been right there. Last year, as I mentioned, co-champs in the regular season. Driving inside. Oh, Kanye oh. Clary with the explosion. Boy, he has jet fast speed. It's two of eight from the field the last two, but you get looks like that. Those are 100% shots, and Kanye Clary showing off the burners. True freshman from Virginia Beach. Penn State up a handful. Here goes Meyer again. Step back three. And a rebound to Lundy. It's interesting. Matt Meyer, eight of his last 31 from three, but he's been shooting 64% from two in that span. He's been really successful inside the arc, and that's been the story tonight for him as well. On the other end, Pickett getting to his spot and drawing the foul, and that's the second on Luke Goody. He's saying, what did I do? And again, haven't seen Jaden Epps yet, but without Epps, He's trying to come back from a concussion. It's just an eight-man rotation. Brandon, you make a good point. Based on the lineups that we've seen at the same time on the floor, Sincere Harris, Ty Rogers, and Luke Goody just before the last media timeout, and the fact that I've been watching Brad Underwood, he hasn't even looked in Jaden Epps' direction. I know pregame he was listed as dressed and available. At this point, I think it's unlikely, certainly not out of the question, but unlikely that Epps may, oh, and as we say that, he's up off the bench. But just a high five. <laughs> just for a high five. Now he's back. Right, just making sure. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I think you look at the supposed severity of the concussion. He had to, as Rick say, be hospitalized for a night. It's just something that they're going to be extra cautious no, with. No, and I totally agree with what Rick's saying. If we haven't seen him by now, you might be able to stretch that a few more minutes. But you, you can imagine he's, we're not going to see him later on either. Yeah. And as he said, they, they were careful to use the term available and not saying that he would play. Shannon knocking down the three, his first field goal of the tournament. That's a big shot for Terrence Shannon. He can get hot in a hurry. He's had multiple games where he has caught fire from the perimeter. Pickett right there helping out on the post. Driving inside. How about Clary again? You talked about that speed. He is lightning quick. Blazing fast. A little crossover dribble and straight to the basket. Look at that. That's where they miss Jay Neps, a guy that can defend the basketball at the point of attack. And Sincere Harris, no surprise, getting up to, to come in here and guard with Kanye Clary. Penn State 10 of 15 from the floor so far. 
Shannon wants another one. That's offline badly. Out of bounds. Back to Clary and his speed. It's just a tough matchup for RJ Melendez. There's the crossover dribble and the help. It's hard to come over when you get beat this badly. No awareness on the weak side and Kanye Clary again living at the rim. Guy who averages less than four points a game, but he already has four here tonight. Boy, Terrence Shannon just set a great screen on Kanye Clary. <laughs> It's totally wiped him out. <laughs> then the ball kick. For the biggest Big Ten experience, there's no plus like home. Big Ten Plus app powered by Big Ten Network. Download it and subscribe now. <laughs> Penn State, one of Mike DeCourcy's last four teams with the big dance right now. Huge game for him. And this is one of their best shooters. And he's doing what he does best. Andrew Funk. That's just not good enough from Illinois. Brad Underwood wants to talk this. Penn State has not been in the big dance since 2011. Taken away, Clary. Takes it the other direction, can't get it, but guess who can? Cam Winter. What a play by Clary again, having a huge impact, and Winter following the play, Shannon going for the block, and the hustle by Penn State paying dividends. Cam Winter, he had his second best game of the season against Illinois on Valentine's Day. Doing it again here. Look at the defense. Boy, Penn State so active. They are staying with these ball screens, basically double teaming the handler and just daring Illinois to shoot from the perimeter. Changes short on the hook shot. Rebound to Kevin John. I just heard Brad Underwood tell Dane Danger no more left. Clary getting into the paint, running left-hander, no. Tapped out though, Jai kept it alive. Funk on the reload. And another offensive board. How about Winter? Wide open. And finally cleared by Illinois. It's just Illinois is so fortunate. Multiple quality looks. Here's Danger again. There's Meyer going toward the corner. Danger. Kick out wide open. Harris, yes. Boy, Illinois needed that. Absolutely. Dane Danger keeping that play alive with the offensive glass. That's been Illinois' strong suit here tonight. Sincere Harris stepping in, making a big one. Had a nice game at Purdue. 11 points, 5 rebounds, 5 of 8. Get a massive shot right there. And then a turnover by John. Nice defensive play by Danger. Read that the whole way. Illinois, huge crowd here tonight at the United Center. Trying to give that crowd something to cheer about. Harris patrols the baseline. Back into danger. Power dribble. Left it short. Got it back. And he's fouled. Timeout on the floor. Danger and captain before transferring to Penn State to play for Micah Shrewsbury. This is another transfer who started his career at Baylor. And Danger, just a 52% foul shooter, misses the first. By the way, Jaden Epps is on the court, just subbed in for the first time. If you weren't with us earlier, missed the last two games due to a concussion in practice. Didn't know if we would see him tonight, but he is on the floor. There's a foul on the rebound against Coleman Hawkins, but that's a big development for Brad Underwood's team, Brad. I was with Rick, too. I'm surprised that it took him this long to get in. Just because you're sitting on that bench and tighten up, hasn't played in a couple games, but we'll, we'll see. Like Rick said, what, what's his win look like? That's, that's a big question mark. Yeah, had not practiced, but stepping on the floor after essentially being out for a week due to that concussion. Driving inside, Pickett cut off. Terry Shannon finding a way to get back up underneath Pickett. Well done defensively. Pickett, top ten of the conference in points, rebounds, and assists. And yes, sir, he can fill it up. We saw it in the first meeting in Champaign. Pickett's so comfortable operating against Jaden Epps, Sincere Harris, and even Sky Clark in that game. Loves those smaller guards. Just puts him in the post, puts him in the torture chamber. On the other end, Hawkins. They work it around the arc. 
That's his first shot. Too much, but an offensive board. The offensive glass in Illinois is just destroying Penn State. They've got nine offensive rebounds. Into the shot clock, and Hawkins forces it up and in. It's a strong move from Coleman Hawkins. Not enough to be an offensive foul, but forceful enough for him to create some space. Find a way with that right hand. With those offensive rebounds, Illinois 12 second chance points. Pickett is just seeking out Dave Neps right now. He, he is looking Ooh, for the first up, and he did walk. Yeah, he switched his pivot foot, and Paul Sells was right on it. Anytime that Pickett can get this matchup with one of Illinois' guards, he is going to try to exploit it in the post. That's fighting him and just a little bit of happy feet right there. It's the right call. Maybe if this was a Bulls game in the United Center, he could have gotten away with it. <laughs> Wrong league. Wrong league. Hawkins, spinning. Good luck. Absolutely. It's a strong take. Just finish the job. Jalen Pickett, his head always on a swivel. This time it's Sincere Harris guarding him. Here we go again. It's weight room time. Pickett getting to his spot. Leaning, fading. No. Pretty good job by Sincere Harris. Even though Pickett got a shot up, got some space, Harris fought him. Then in transition, Shannon off the mark. Brad Underwood says about Sincere Harris that he is a relentless defender. He gave him the nickname in the preseason, Mr. 94 Feet. Not going to back down from anyone. He's going to talk a ton of trash. <laughs> he's going to compete. Yeah, they say he's the most vocal in practice. That ball kicked by Dane Danger. 20. You brought out the iPhone and opened the calculator app. That was pretty impressive work by you. Well, 12 divided by 29 is apparently 0. .41. So the, the day for you to agree going to work. <laughs> the days of the TI-85 calculator are long gone. Hit at the top of the arc. In and out for Michael Hill. That's what he's out there for. He can pick and pop. Got a great look off the ball screen. Fifth year senior. Danger missed the dunk, but they're going to get a foul on him. That's his second. Just a beautiful pocket pass here from Terrence Shannon. Look at the health defense for Nittany Lions in that area. Danger rolling to the rim, and that's one that he's got to finish. Well, Danger missed his two free throws earlier. Now he's got a chance at redemption here in the native of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And he knocks it down. Stick around, State Farm Halftime Report. Dave and the gang. Getting you caught up on everything going on in the Big Ten tournament and highlights and analysis from this first half that's coming up at the break. And Danger gets them both. Now Luke Goody is going to come back in here and he's playing with two fouls. About as small as you'll see in a Big Ten game. Coleman Hawkins certainly 6'10, short by any means. Perimeter players on the floor for both squads. Yeah, Penn State, as they have so often this season, going small now with Hit on the bench. Cam Winter driving. Shot clock at four. He lost the dribble. Counted by Shannon. That's going to be a violation. Illinois basketball. Illinois switching screens on and off the ball with this lineup, and there's just nowhere to go. But this fighting Illini crowd likes what they saw in that defensive possession. As you might expect, being 135 miles from Champaign, it is a sea of orange here at the United Center. Melendez looks inside. Hawkins going to work. He gets. He did his work early. I mean, he buried his defender. He's the biggest guy on the floor, and Illinois wisely going right to him. Oh, a slip. Two slips. And then a strip. 
What a play by Melendez. Boy, a bucket here. It's going to get really loud. But everybody right now. It's carnage on the floor. It's falling. Bodies everywhere. There's confusion about whose basketball it is. There's still officially no signal. It looked like it just blew out of Terrence Shannon's hand. But they're going to keep they're gonna it to Illinois. Illinois. He's in transition. This is when Shannon is at his best. That's just fly out of Shannon's hand. Yeah. I didn't see any, anyone tip it. But the slips are starting to become to the point where I'm thinking there might be a problem with the floor at the moment. Certainly follow. Yeah. Hawkins again. One point game. Again, he's got great post position. Find your way to the halftime break and then you go back to Giant Head. I think Micah was just saying it should have been a three second call in the lane on Coleman Hawkins. And Myers just not letting him come off the ball screen. First foul on Meyer. Neither team in the bonus. Five fouls for each. Meyer, known to jaw from time to time and known to down some monster energy drinks out there talking a little bit. It just cracks me up how proud he was of how many he if, drank. If you didn't hear the story, he drank six in one night after their game against Ohio State about ten days ago and got caffeine poisoning and missed two days of practice. As Funk misses the three. See if he can bring the energy here and give him the lead. Good pass from Meyer. Goody off the mark. This place would have went crazy if that went down. Coleman Hawkins doing a good effort there, but Penn State lives to fight another day. The offensive glass has really been big for Illinois. State Farm halftime report coming up in just a little bit. Great first half. And we knew that this would be a pro Illinois crowd, obviously, but it's really starting to come to life here in the late stages. They were looking to make sure that the shot clock was in the right spot, and it's at 28 seconds where it should be. Pick it just three points. He's driving inside, looking for more. Offensive foul. I think the thing that Micah Shrewsbury is not going to like about that is that there, there is an initial bump. It's before this. On the second one, Melendez, he, he sells it well. There is contact, but I thought Pickett got fouled before this contact. That's definitely sold very well by R.J. Melendez. First foul on Jalen Pickett, six on Penn State as a team. Now Meyer trying to back down. Leaning. Pick it with a one-handed board. Here he comes. Dropping it off to Lundy. Rejected by Hawkins. But Lundy sticks with it. That's the second time we've seen Lundy blocked at the rim, but staying with it. You could tell with the initial shot pick. I thought he could have scored initially over the top of Goody. That's in the back of his mind. Give Seth Lundy a lot of credit for that toughness staying with the play. Lundy, three rebounds away from a double-double already. Shannon on the crossover. Boy, he loves to do that, and he's good at it. Just getting his game on rhythm, dribble, 15-footer over the top of Jalen Pickett. He's played his high school ball at Lincoln Park High here in Chicago before going to IMG Academy for one season in Florida. That's a really close that half court line. Shot clock off. Lundy rejected again by Hawkins. Well, Lundy had no idea that it could have taken the last shot there of the half. Instead, Illinois with a chance to grab the lead. Shannon wants the ball. This is going up right here. Short. And Penn State led by 10. But All the couple of threes and gotten long bounces off the back of the rim. He just wants them to show the same kind of effort on the glass. He feels like the numbers will even themselves out in the second half. Okay, and we'll see if this guy Pickett can do a little bit more, Rod. Just three points in the first half. Here's Funk for three. Well designed play to start the second half. Yeah, it's that screen rescreen action that they love for Andrew Funk. The back screen and then the rescreen. 
Melendez not doing a bad job, but Funk doesn't need much space, and he knocks it down from the top of the key. Four years at Bucknell, and now getting the fifth COVID season at Penn State. He's hit two. Meyer cannot knock that down, and here comes Jalen Pickett. One, one and done. Block out there by Winter. Melendez trying to get that offensive rebound. Winter having none of it. Jalen Pickett, first team all Big Ten, but he left that short. He's left a couple of shots short tonight. Then the guy that can play 40 minutes and has done that multiple times went for 18 in the first half But he's some tired legs. He's had an incredible season He has left a bunch of shots short here tonight Just an incredible season. He's over 2,000 points in his career and there's Terrence Shannon taking it to the rim Kevin Jai trying to not pick up that third foul and be lucky he didn't right there. It looked like he was close to that restricted area. Didn't jump, didn't leave his feet. Shannon just right through his chest. Winner off the bounce, stops and slips. Meyer gets on the deck with him. And the arrow will send it the other way. Another slip on the floor. We saw about five of those in the first half. For Illinois, more than seven points. Shannon and Meyer each at that mark. He's run a ton of spread tonight. Here it comes again. The, the handoff from Danger. It's going to be Meyer getting it. And he falls down. You pointed it out really well, but you're, you're right. Six or seven times where we've just seen bodies go out. Meanwhile, Danger puts it in and the foul. A quick, decisive move from Dane Danger. That's Kevin Jai's third foul. He catches this basketball right at the G and big and just spins immediately. You see him be decisive. Good things happen for Dane Danger. And that's exactly what happened right there. The band loves it too. They made the trip up I-57. Dane Danger, you see his quickness when he was asked in the offseason what changed from when he arrived at Baylor as a freshman He said I'm much quicker. He got to Champaign 295 dropped 30 pounds by changing his diet and his workout routine really credited Adam Fletcher the strength and conditioning coach and He's put in the work and he's having a nice night I think the juxtaposition between playing for Brad Underwood and playing for Scott Drew <laughs> is the most hilarious thing. And it seems like Scott Drew rarely raises his voice, and Brad is certainly fiery. Yes, that's one word to describe it. And of course, Defense. Matthew Meyer also played for Coach Drew, and now in an Illinois uniform. He's trying to keep Lundy on the side here. Down on that side ball screen, he's going to have to make a play. And he does just that. Great move by Seth Lundy. Never settled. He was going to get to the rim by Coleman Hawkins and use that right at the left side. Hawkins getting to his spot. Waits puts it up. Yes. This is what Coleman Hawkins needs to be every game. I mean, physical, tough. Grinding out baskets, not taking bad shots, and taking advantage of mismatches. And with Danger and Hawkins out there, it's tough for Pitt State to defend in the post. Especially when they're not making threes and flipping the matchup. Camp Winter is just balling out here. It, degree of difficulty on that shot, 10 out of 10. Fading away, defense right there. A big time shot. Well, Penn State led pretty much the entire first half, but now it's turning into a seesaw battle. Back and forth we go in Chicago. How fun is this. Luke Goody starting at that left block, taking a down screen, getting to the free throw line, and drilling a fadeaway jumper. Illinois hit their last four. There's a foul on Melinda, his first. Luke Goody, just a matter of time before he gets it going. We saw it against Purdue. The season high, simple curl screen, pretty well defended over the top of Andrew Funk, but Goody using his size, drilling the fadeaway. Broke his left foot in October, had surgery, did not return to practice until February 2nd. Just his ninth game back, but he said last week to the media, starting to feel like he's getting his full win. Just 4 of 12 from 3 on the year, but when you sit out for that long and that's your thing as a shooter, it takes some time. Get those legs up underneath you, get those lungs back. Luke Goody, certainly a piece that's going to help them win games. This is a piece, but Funk misses. 
Dobbins are really aware of him flying off. Got to contest. Still waiting for you to get a danger punt in. I almost got used up in the sound. <laughs> <laughs> I think November, actually. Yeah, no doubt. That's the third foul on Michael Hinn against the Illinois big fella, Dane Danger. Penn State foul trouble in the front court is going to be a story here. Jai with three, Hen with three. Illinois have to think they are going to look to exploit those mismatches and throw the ball inside to their bigs. Illinois secured in their NCAA tournament hopes. Penn State on the bubble. Hawkins misses the open 17 footer. Danger set up a screen. Totally free. Coleman Hawkins, no one within 10 feet of him. Penn State has won five of their last six to get on the right side of the bubble, according to Mike DeCourcy. But turning it over here. This is Jalen Pickett not holding off Coleman Hawkins. Usually you feel pretty good. Pickett as functionally strong as anybody in this league. And Hawkins with the effort, making a play on it, knocking it away. And it, it gets Cam off the leg of Jalen Pickett. Not often at this juncture of the game, you see Cam Pickett one of five from the floor with just three points, but that's what he's got. Shannon pulls up. Battle for the board. Yeah, bodies are flying. And they're going to get Jalen Pickett his second. Penn State comes in less than nine. It's interesting, you always wonder about ice, and there certainly is ice for the Chicago Blackhawks here, but there's a million basketball games that yes. get played here as well. It's not like it's an 80-degree day outside. It's snowing and cold. Yeah, and there wasn't a problem yesterday or earlier today. Now, that's the fourth foul on Michael Hinn. You talked about Penn State and some of those front court players having issues, so now four on the big fella. Miles Dredd gonna check in which means Penn State's going back to that small lineup if You're gonna play small. You're gonna give up some size inside You've got to flip that matchup offensively with your skill and knock down shots from the perimeter So it's Hawkins in danger time. I would imagine Here's Hawkins and That's gonna be on picket. That's his third Five team fouls already this half for Penn State. Just one for Illinois. They're just going to go right back to it. This is smash mouth basketball. It could be Hawkins. It could be Danger. Hawkins gets the bounce. Uh, Penn State's got to figure something out on that end. Up, Illinois' largest lead of the night. No surprise, Illinois has not attempted a three here in the second half. It has been all in the paint, and it's been all at the rim. That's what Brad Underwood said to Rick at halftime. We got to go to the rim, and they have. Boy, another oh, slip. But how did Clary do that? Going down, gets it up with the left hand, gets by danger. Clary really impacting this game with his speed. Mentioned he's a freshman, but getting more playing time down the stretch, and you're seeing why. He's had a good game tonight. Meyer in trouble. Whoa, whoa, rocket inside the danger. People are slipping all over this yeah. floor. Hawkins again with a fadeaway. He just flashes moments of brilliance at you. That fadeaway jumper is big time. Nothing going on that possession doesn't matter. Coleman Hawkins just making a great individual play. Remember, it's a guy who had a triple double on November 29th against Syracuse. Dread can't get it. Hawkins already has eight of his 12 this half, but he's going to go to his fellow big man, Dave Danger. A guy who over the last four has not been doing a whole lot. Less than five points a game, but a different story tonight. The line drive that free was throw. A laser. <laughs> The booze raining down on the officials as Andrew Funk will step to the line, an 81% shooter. <laughs> Illinois has done a phenomenal job of taking away open looks for Penn State. This is a team that loves to get them up on three, and the looks just haven't been there tonight. After us, it'll be Maryland and Minnesota, Jamison Battle. Fouled out last night, but had a good game prior to fouling out in the win. And his team has another opportunity to keep their season alive. The winner of this one will face Northwestern tomorrow. 
at approximately 6.30 Eastern. Jalen Pickett has been quiet. Kicks it out, Lundy, who had a great start to the game. Step back three, no. Good defense there by Melinda. He closed out. He went and helped out on Pickett, then got back, forced to dribble, and contested that Lundy jumper. You said it. They're really defending the arc well. Goody got a look, but couldn't knock it down. Anything you're seeing, Rob, that Penn State could do differently on this hit? Well, I think you got to get this man involved. This is a guy that has played at an All-American level all year long. He's got 61 points in two regular season games against the Illini. And so far, Illinois has pretty much shut the water off. That's the spot he likes to get to. Around the arc, there's Funk. Yes! You get that deep. The Illinois defense has to collapse. The extra pass from Lundy over to Funk in the corner. That's more like it for Penn State. That's the way they played all year long. Andrew Funk has hit three of the four three-pointers for the Nittany Lions. Well, Melendez way too tall for Shannon. A reminder about the BTN Big Ten K race returning to Soldier Field in Chicago July 15th. Scan that QR code to register or go to btnbigtenk.com. Nittany Lions try to get the lead back. Three ties, six lead changes already in this game. Kick it, going to work. He's got so much space. I mean, shooters all around him, so he's got all this room to operate. He just finds a way to score it at the rim. He finds a way like the YMCA. It's a 7-0 run for Penn State. I don't think you see too many guys like Jalen Pickett at the YMCA. No, if you do, you better run. Other than you, maybe. <laughs> Shannon. Yes, good answer. Kidding. That's a big time shot from Terry Shannon. Ball moving around the arc, and even though Illinois' success has really come from two, Shannon drilling it from three. Now Pickett is starting to call for the basketball. Distributing, clearing. Great spacing there by Penn State. They were a little better space. They were going to shot off that Clary drive. Lundy, reverse. Wow! How did that go? I thought it was going to hit the underside of the goal. It had the perfect English on it. Tough angle from Lundy. Unbelievable. He's got 15. Oh we're God. knotted, and we're not knotted anymore. Shannon for two. I think Lundy thought that was just eyewash. You cut with a purpose, and that's what Terrence Shannon is doing right there. Coleman Hawkins dropping it off. Pretty action. High level right now at the United Center. Clary wants to drive it. Leans in. Melendez. Much better by Melendez there. Only moved his feet. Knocked out. And they're going to say it'll stay with Penn State when we get back. We've had it all. Paul Sells came over during the timeout. He wanted to go back to that tech on Dane Danger. What did he tell you? Well, I, I misremembered in one of the million college games I lost this year. <laughs> it was not a technical foul, but there was a memo that went out afterwards, and it said that that should be a tech going forward. Meanwhile, Shannon is in a heap of pain, grabbing at that lower right leg. So a numbers advantage for Penn State. Offensive rebound for Pickett. Shannon trying to play D here. And ultimately, there's going to be a foul on Coleman Hawkins. But denied any help from the staff. He's going to stay out there and grit this one out. Okay. Senior wanting to stay on the floor with his team. They got the shot clock reset to 20 after a long look. And there's a reach-in foul on Shannon. Just his second. Shannon had Lundy cut. Coleman Hawkins got a little bit lost. And Pickett just never saw him. Pickett fighting Funk. Beautiful shot fake. Four three pointers tonight for Andrew Funk. Design play. So well done. Clary coming off first, and then it's Funk just boomerang off that screen. Shot fake. Melendez flies by, and Funk knocking it down. He's now hit 95 on the season, most of the conference. Melendez throwing it down on the baseline. Shown 
showed some signs of life over the last five games. Eight points a game, 48 from the field, 37 from three. Driving in there and hammering it. Our 10th lead change. Could this be number 11? Yes! Dread from deep. Here's Ty Rogers. This is what Miles Dread is out there to do. 97% of his shots come from the three-point line. You turn your back, you lose track, and Dredd getting it done. And there's some experienced guys on this floor. Dredd tonight his 149th game. A Penn State record. Hawkins then going against Dredd, and Dredd gets the tie-up and give the ball to Penn State on the arrow. Nice job right here by Dredd, staying down, and then that's just all ball. Hawkins going up, under out of bounds. Andrew Funk, we're going to see him right here. Clary's the first off, and now it's Funk. Little shot fake, Melendez flying by. Play designed there by Micah Shrewsbury, and these Penn State jumpers waking up here late. And now Pickett, draw the foul on Goody, and woo, at the end of that, Goody's got to be careful. He checked himself, nothing flagrant. Third foul on the sophomore. The only player in the country averaging 18, 7, and 7. In fact, he's the only player besides Denzel Valentine to do that in the last 30 years. That is hard to believe. Pretty good company. He's got it right now, this picket. Picket. Got the much bigger danger defending him. And he cannot score it over the top. Any time the danger forces him into a pull-up jumper, he's done his job. It's a shot that Pickett makes, but danger moving his feet and not letting him get to the rim. Coleman Hawkins had a good night tonight, and he's had a good night in the painted area. He's going back there now. Can't get it to drop. The block out there by Dredd. You'll take that from Hawkins. That's a solid move right over the top. Just don't get it to go, and then Penn State cleaning up the defensive glass. But Dredd is a brick house. He looks like a middle linebacker. He's got a flame for a jumper, though. He does, yeah. <laughs> so, big body shooter. Kick it. Kicks it out to Lundy. Lundy cross-court skip around the arc. It goes to Pickett. Back for the board. Off. Yeah, he has. Lundy almost kept that alive. Well, you talked about could he be a little fatigued. He's played crazy minutes. One of those guys that Michael Shrewsbury can leave him out there and never gets tired, but it's been a long year. He has had quite the season. Jalen Pickett, first team all Big Ten. Sporting News the other day named him a second team All American. First at Penn State since 1955. Count the bucket and the foul on Dredd. Big danger going up against the undersized Miles Dredd. Dredd trying to fight him, push him off the block. I, I'm honestly not sure what the foul is, to be honest. What's he supposed to do? He's got his arm bar there. Danger's initiating the contact. I, I don't agree with that. Danger continuing his big night. He's got 12 and 6. Some of his free throws are laser beams, and some look like that. He's 5 of 7 at the line. That type of inconsistency is why you shoot 52% <laughs> from the foul line. Andrew Funk. Now Lundy. They cannot quiet the crowd. Illinois has run more spread than I can remember all year long. It's a ton. Bad pass by Shannon. Camp winner. Blew a tire at the end of that, but there's a foul, and he will be at the line. Packed house at the convincingly 174 59, and then on Valentine's Day in the return game, that's when Pickett had 41, and Penn State would win by a dozen. Illinois has done a much better job on Pickett here tonight. Just five points, seven rebounds, six assists, and some of the games they've given up, not just to Pickett. Trace Jackson Davis is at 35 and 26, Tony Perkins 32, James Battle 31. Boo Booey 35, Hunter Dickinson 30. I mean, they have given up 
some monster performances this season. But tonight, nobody has more than 15 against him, and that's Seth Lundy. Pickett got a hand on it. Just a lazy pass right there. All tied at 56. R.J. Melendez, but he tapped it out. Good tap out there. Spread again. Melendez breaking it off, but keeping it alive on the offensive glass. He does a lot of little things. Hawkins. What a dribble here. A whistle, and that is away from the ball. But that shot clock is at five. Hawkins is going to have to make an individual play over the top of, of Pickett. And now that's four fouls on Keba Jai. So you have both Jai and Michael Hinn with four personals. And the four star top 100 freshman goes to the bench next to his head coach, Micah Shrewsbury. Danger five of seven at the line tonight. And Lundy grabs it. I know that Pickett only has five, Rob. But you just feel like it's only a matter of time before he gets into a groove. It's here. still going to be his time. I mean, they're going to put the ball in his hands here in the game and let him make plays just like that. There you go. Right at Coleman Hawkins. He's going to be an All-American this year. That's the type of season he's had. Unbelievable, he wasn't a, a unanimous first-team All-Big Ten selection, but he, he is going to be the one that's in charge of making plays for Penn State late game. Down inside, danger, deep post touch. It's the left hand. What do you say, Brad Underwood said about that? Yeah, called him out on that in the first half. He's, just, he's got a berry dread and just put him in the basket. Yeah, he was also fading away. Here goes Pickett again. Back door. What a cut indeed. Lundy. What a pass. That's close quarters right there. Operating out of the post. Lundy a little back cut. Jalen Pickett finding him. Lundy with 17. Penn State, who was up 10 in the first half. Now they're back up four. Matt Meyer, he said he's shooting this. See, he came to get that ball, and well, he's grabbing his knee. And he's still grabbing it. Funk bumped into that knee. Free throws the rest of the way. There's 19 fouls on Penn State. Pretty quiet night for Meyer. He does have seven rebounds, seven points. Normally averages 13. He looked like a man on a mission on that play. He came and got the basketball, got the pick and roll, and if he hadn't gotten fouled, it was, it was going up. And he misses the front end, 75% shooter. And there's a foul on R.J. Melendez, and now it'll be one and one on this end. Jalen Pickett helped pilot this team to two regular season victories over Illinois, but only seven tonight. Again, he does have the eight rebounds and the seven assists, so he's doing it another way. A guy who had zero offers out of high school, so he did a post-grad year at Spire Academy, and that got him a few small Division I offers. So he went to Siena, was three-time first-team all-conference there before transferring to Penn State. He's a broadcast journalism major, Rob, and he wants to get into TV someday, so look Good. at he'll, he'll be taking your job. He wants to be an analyst. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But he said before that, after his pro career, he'd like to be a coach as well. And his head coach, Micah Shrewsbury, just has an endless list of good things to say about that young man. Illinois has got to go inside here. Hawkins or Danger. He's got the size advantage. Make Penn State pay for it. Driving the ball is a good way to do it, too. Back to the free throw line we go. Because when Illinois has been successful, it's been pounding that ball inside. Absolutely. Hawkins, Danger. The Terrence Shannon driving. This is the guy that leads the Big Ten in free throws made, second in free throws attempted. And it's always a good option when he puts his head down and gets to the paint. The 
free throw line went back in the corner. And 6 of 11. A reminder, tournament rolls on after this one. It's Maryland and Minnesota presented by TIAA right here on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Gets the second. It's been a while since these two have met in the Big Ten Tournament. Last time, 2008. Illinois won all of the three previous meetings in this event. Jalen Pickett backing down Melendez. Gets him to a spot. Yes, and the foul. It is Jalen Pickett time at the Big Ten Tournament. It's all about matchups. Pickett now as the screener sets the ball screen to get Shannon off him. Melendez just giving ground. Doesn't let him land. And it just looks like Jalen Pickett has woken up for his offense. He's made plays for others, but end the game, he's making plays for himself. What do you call that face? I believe as Steven Bardo way. would say, the bitter beer face. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Man, this kid, so special, the fifth-year senior. He has worked on his game. He has made himself into a pro. And he and his team on a 9-1 run right now. Illinois has to find themselves quickly. Meyer tripping. Funk took it away. Up ahead, Lundy. Knocked out. Saved. And then we will head the other direction. It belongs to Illinois. Nice job by Illinois with their transition defense of getting back and contesting that run out. The turnover, live ball turnovers can kill you, but they got back. Remember, this is the team that leads the Big Ten in its third nationally in block per game. They were going to put it on the glass. Got a good contest. Illinois hasn't had a field goal in almost four minutes. Hawkins needs to change that, and he does with a reverse. That's what it's got to be. They have got to win this game by grinding it out in the painted area. Use your size and go inside. And Coleman Hawkins, the only scholarship player left from two seasons ago, is having a nice night with 14. I thought Drake could have gotten that up. Yeah, I thought so. like a day to go on the closeout. But Funk will take it. Another one. Five tonight for Funk from downtown. It's a paint touch. It's an extra pass. And it's an Andrew Funk three from the right wing. The lead is eight. It was ten in the first That's half. Awesome. It is offensive indeed on Hawkins. Have the size advantage and when they've gone inside they've had success now for Penn State it's no secret where this ball is going I mean, it is going to be Jalen Pickett creating for others or himself what a luxury right now to have number 22 they're gonna try to get Shannon off them the ball screen so they, they want to get a switch and that's why Punk's gonna rescreen but good job by Shannon of fighting through now it's Goody's turn Cam Winter right down Broadway Wow! Count it and the foul, and they tied their largest lead of the night. I thought Winner should have dropped it off, but instead he just leaves his feet and gets right through. Now, now Hawkins did leave the ground. It looked like there, and when you do that, that was, a, that was a little Michael Jordan esque. No, it really was. The hang time. I just, I'm a little surprised that was a block yeah. because if you leave your feet and you jump straight up. You're in legal guarding position, but nonetheless, an incredible finish by Cam Winter. And a really good night for Cam Winter, although he cannot complete the three-point play. He's got 15. Penn State on an extended 14-3 run. Matthew Meyer. Oh, dangerous pass. Around the arc. It's like a hot potato. Who wants it? Hawkins. Foul on Dredd. Free throws coming. 
Smart by Hawkins there to drive it. Dredd put two hands on him, and that's going to be a foul every time out in front of the officials. Three on Dredd. It's one where sometimes you see Hawkins settle, take a, a contested three or a deep three, and instead put it on the floor and put the onus on the officials to make a call. Illinois, one of Mike DeCourcy's last four in. And Hawkins misses the free throw. Micah Shrewsbury trying to get them back to the tournament for the first time since 2011. And this would pretty much seal no, the I mean, deal. This puts you in. They would still have a solid opportunity to make the tournament depending on other teams, even with a loss. But you don't want to sweat out selection Sunday. You win today. They've won five of their last six coming into the tournament. Several of those in dramatic fashion. Right now up nine. Pick it. Oh, through the hands of Clary. Meyer inside Rogers. Back out to Meyer. And he left it short. Illinois felt like that's one that they needed. Absolutely. Got a good look. Clary just not catching the basketball. Wasn't a bad pass. Just hit him in the hands and bounced out. Opportunity for Illinois, but opportunity squandered. It's 4 of 17 for the fighting Illini from deep. Down to the final two minutes. Illinois just trying to get it out of Pickett's hands, but now you're going to be in rotation. Clary's wide open, so is Funk. That Funk got another one. Largest lead, it's a dozen. Meyer, short. Shannon comes up with it, lays it in, and the foul as well. And Grant Underwood just said to Matt Meyer, drive the ball. And you're getting to the time where you need threes, but you need good quality threes. Nice job by Shannon just to crash in here. Lundy not really actively blocking out, and there's the contact, there's the layup. Three-point play opportunity for Terrence Shannon. And just like he did in Champagne. Yeah. same deal. Andrew Funk has been a thorn in the side of the fighting Illini. 20 points in the first meeting, 20 points tonight. Another six threes down. The transfer a book now. Trying to put Illinois' Big Ten tournament title hopes to bed early. 72-63, not done yet. And timeout. Two left now for Penn State. Iowa National Bank. Foul before the ball comes in on Sincere Harris. Double bonus, both teams, rest of the way. Clary has not been there much this year. Nine of twelve. We should say though, last two weeks of the season, this is right where the, the team trailing wanted to be. <laughs> Some of the comebacks. That we saw late in the Big Ten. Penn State on both sides of that. The Rutgers lost and the Maryland win where they trailed by 12 with six to play. Somehow came back. Winner won that game at the buzzer. You think about Illinois' season finale at Purdue. They were down 24. Came back to tie that game in the final two minutes. Larry misses both. The door is slightly ajar for the Illini. Harris slipped. Shannon rips and drives, and nobody stops it. Down to seven. Timeout, Brad. Up. 80% as well. Some good shooters on the floor for Micah Shrewsbury. Get it into winner. And across the timeline it goes. Play this out if you're Illinois, yeah, right? Now you have to. Now you're to 16. You can trap, but you don't want to foul. See if they work this back to pick it. Here he is. Getting to his spot, kicking it out. Winner. Pulls up. Left it short. Oh! Did he step out of bounds? Yes, that was huge. Harris could not stay in bounds. They get a stop. Sincere Harris. It's going to be that left foot. Oh, it's just right on that line. So now you reset the shot clock to 20. I don't know that you can afford letting 20 seconds go off the clock here, Rob. No, I think you have to foul now. Yeah. 
Illinois asking for a review, but it would be a, a short-lived one. Yeah. More falling on the court. Dangerous pass. Let's see when they foul. Run this down. It's going to be 30 seconds on the game clock. I'm surprised. Yeah, now they do. But yeah, still let a good 10 seconds run off. And it's not like you fouled a guy who's bad at the line. Winner's a 77% foul shooter, even though he is just one of three tonight. There's just not many good options to foul on this Penn State team. No. Winner 77, Pickett 77, Funk 81, Lundy 80. A very good foul shooting team. Cam Winter, reigning co-Big Ten Player of the Week, shared that honor with Indiana's Trace Jackson Davis for his two game-winning shots last week. Huge. They're all big right now. Sixteen points for Winter, which is what he's been averaging over the last six games. Pickett can start to smell it. And Winter had been in a real funk, but he found his way out, and he's been a big part of this resurgence for Penn State. Not just the game winners, but his production overall. Penn State, 40 seconds away from a meeting with Northwestern tomorrow night. Goody for three. Yes! Don't go anywhere yet. Two possession game. Over there is Micah. <laughs> yeah, two different stints, though, as a Purdue assistant under Matt Painter. Pass comes in. Dredd is fouled with 33.6 to go. And everyone talks about you know, Matt Painter's evolution offensively. And I think he's one of the best offensive coaches in college basketball. But I was at Purdue when Micah Shrewsbury came over from Butler. And I think a lot of the change that we saw at Purdue from an offensive standpoint came when he brought new ideas. And then when he saw everything NBA-wise with Brad Stevens with the Celtics, he was a defensive coordinator. So, so he just took everything that worked against them and has implemented it into their offense. He is a brilliant offensive mind. Now you think about the tutelage of Brad Stevens and Matt Painter. Pretty good. Second one. Red gets it, so a three possession game. Terrence Shannon races it up. Looked like he had space to shoot the three instead. Stripped by Lundy, but they get it back. Hawkins lays it in. Cam Winter can't believe there wasn't a foul. Cam Winter's looking at. You don't want to show the ref up. I mean, he, he's bleeding, it looks like, and he's showing the ref. The blood on his hands. Yeah, but you got to be careful can't get here. Tech right now, if you're Penn State. <laughs> That's the last thing you need. Five point game. Lundy just gets all ball right there. The winner, you got to know they're coming in. Certainly, Shannon takes a big swipe, but hard to tell right there what exactly he got. Picking a 78% shooter. Ooh. Penn State's leaving the door. They are. Nine of 17 from the foul line for a team that is fifth in the Big Ten at 74% on the year. You would think this is the guy you want at the line, the All American. And he does get the second. Back up the floor comes Terrence Shannon. They try to drive it again out of control and a block on Dredd indeed. Four fouls on him. Two more free throws. I'm surprised, though, at this juncture, Rob, they didn't try to shoot a three-pointer. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're just running out of time and trading twos for twos. And, and fortunately for Illinois, they've traded some twos for ones because of some missed foul shots. But I agree. But it's very counterintuitive to what we say about Illinois, where it's like drive the ball, drive right. the ball, and don't settle for threes. But you're, you're getting into that time period where you're going to have to shoot some from the perimeter. And if you miss free throws, it, it's not going to matter. 80% foul shooter who as Rob said earlier has made more free throws than anybody else in the conference this year, but big miss there The end of this game has just been foul shot after foul shot after foul shot from about the seven minute off And the kid from Chicago knocks down the second 
Jaden Epps, who has not played much, comes back in. Shannon sits. Penn State getting it into winter. Illinois has got to foul. 12 seconds even. What a win this would be for Penn State against a crowd that is very pro-Illinois. Already beaten Illinois twice this season. And with your NCAA tournament hopes essentially on the line, it looks like they're going to get it done. Yeah, the stakes for them. I mean, you're looking at this. It's not a do-or-die game, but certainly a game where you can make your season. Because it's all about making the NCAA tournament. And for this group to have done it, you think about the guys that stuck around and Seth Lundy, Miles Red. They're not done yet. I mean, you've got to make some foul shots. Not making things comfortable down the stretch, but as any Penn State fan will tell you over the last few seasons It's been close game after close game after close game I will say for Lundy and Dredd a lot of guys would have left and a lot of guys did leave And, and they were the ones that stuck around when Micah Shrewsbury got hired and Assuming you hang on in the last 12 seconds, you're gonna be rewarded with the ultimate trip and that's for the big dance Six points, 12 seconds. Shannon rises. Shannon missed it. Four seconds. And a foul is going to be on Penn State, but it's going to be too little, too late. I mean, even if you make the first, miss the second, there's just nothing, there's not enough time. Penn State just had Illinois number this year Finally the Illini Don't get torched by Jalen Pickett from a scoring perspective, but everybody else Lundy's got 17 Funk's got 20 Winter's got 18 Pickett ends up with 12 The balance for Penn State and we talked about the three-point shooting Illinois did a pretty good job. I thought but still the Nittany Lions 38% and they still make eight threes just two under their average. Illinois, they will be in the NCAA tournament. Question for them is seeding right now. Mike DeCourcy has him in that 8 9 game. Congratulations to the one seed. If that comes out and they win their first, and you get this group. I still think Illinois could be a team that they lose in the first round, but I think they could be a team that's playing in the Sweet 16. Yep. I really do. Something that's eluded them as of late. They just beat UCLA and Texas on accident. Yeah, these teams are really good. Timeout, Micah Shrewsbury. Now, Penn State still has a timeout if they need it. There's a foul before it ever comes in. It'll be the freshman at the line, Kanye Clary. 0 of 2 tonight. Part of Penn State's highest rated recruiting class ever. He and Keba Giant Company. And he knocks down the first. A Penn State team that is one five of six about to be six of seven when they looked like they were on the wrong side of the bubble They rose up and Boy did they rise up tonight Next two teams chopping at the bit upset minded Minnesota getting ready to take on Maryland Final ticks Epps won't matter, but it does go and that'll do it. Penn State. Might that be the...